Hey guys, welcome to today's Lead Code Sunday contest. Um, let's get straight into it. Um, it's four weekly contest 434, and there are still 20 minutes left. And I was able to solve the first three problems. The last problem is super hard, so um, yeah, I just decided to make the video. So yeah, let's start from the first problem. So first problem is pretty simple. It's just a brute force. It says that. Uh, we are given an array and then we want to partition it on the left. We want to partition it based on an index such that the all the elements to the left of the index have a particular sum, let's say S1, and all the elements to the right of the index have a particular sum S2. And you just want to find how many uh, partitions can you make such that the difference between S1 and S2 is even. So just brute force it out, I'll just go through the code. I mean, there's nothing really much going on here. Uh, and its case would be to go till n minus one because it's mentioned in the constraint. So that's what pretty much I'm doing here. Obviously you can optimize it to it in O of n using prefix sums, but in the interest of speed and time, I just, yeah, I mean, everyone, I think there's just, there's a brute force on these type of questions. Yeah. So. Calculate left sum, calculate right sum, check if their difference mod 2 is like even, increment the count, return the count. All right, going on to the next question. All right, this one was, uh, this one was really ugly and I really hate this question, but um, <laughs> you gotta do it, right? So um, it's kind of a design problem where you're given, given events and events are like, a uh, user can message, uh, like it's a notification event where if it's message, then everyone that is mentioned in this uh, string gets a message and at this particular time. And if, uh, and now this mention string can have three cases. So it's like ID number where, um, where all the uh, numbers in this mention string, basically all the users in this mention string get an event, get a notification, right? And it can also mention the offline user. So there are two types of users, online and offline. So we don't care if like it is in this format. If it is all, then it will drop an event to all the users, right? And if it's here, it will say that, okay, get me all the currently online users and just, you know, tag them, just drop an event to them. And now we are also given an offline event. Offline event is basically, we are given some user, which is let's say IDI, and we just want to make them offline. We want to dis make them disappear for one hour. I mean, 60 time units or whatever, right? So then they'll come back online after this much time, but for the time being they're offline, right? So a couple of observations here. The first observation is that your offline event, so if like timestamp is T, and it contains two types of events, offline and message, right? Then precedence should be given to the offline event, right? Because the user will go offline at time t, right? And then simultaneously they will get a, they should not get a message because they're offline, right? So that's first observation. So offline is given precedence or a message if the timestamp is the same. Second observation is that you have to sort the events by timestamp sort by timestamp, right? Because that's how events should be treated. And yeah, these are the only two critical observations in this problem. The rest is just implementation, right? So for offline users, you can maintain a hash map, a map of uh, the ID and when they are coming back online, when they're online, yeah? So like, their timestamp ti plus 60. This maintain this hash map, and whenever there's a mention of here, whenever we want the online users, we'll just, uh, you know, iterate over this hash map and see if the current timestamp is like, t cover is greater than the offline hash map of id or not, right? We'll go iterate over all the ids, obviously, zero to n, minus one, whatever, yeah. I'll just go through the code, and basically what you have to, written here is the number of mentions, like how many times this user was tagged, right? So yeah, just go over the code. Um, 
so i mean this is a helper function where if you have an id so here like it's like like this id of one two three four five then you want to return the one two three four five index right this is just for hashing it so that's what i'm doing over this is just a helper function to get the id where it returns one two three four five and now first thing i'm doing is sorting right so if your events that e1 and e2 they are, these are two events if their timestamps are equal and if the first guy is offline like if the first mess event is an offline event then we want it to come first right and if the second event is an offline event we want the second event to come first that means e1 and e2 the order is not true it should be e2 and e1 that's why you return false and in all other cases you return true right because then none of these are offline events both of them are message event and then you can just treat them however you want because the timestamps are the same. same. And in the other case, uh, you can check if the timestamp is less than the other event's timestamp, right? So this is how you sort the events. And then, yeah, just iterate over this, maintain a map of offline users, um, take the message, take the time, take the mentions. If the message, like, it's, it's a message event, it's the notification event, if it says all, then you just drop a, the dot is my answer, right? Yeah, dot, 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 where is dot? Yeah, dot is my answer, like how many times, the number of times the user was tagged. Um, if it's an all event, just do a plus plus dot i. If it's a here event, then you want only online users, then you trade over all the users, and you go to the offline hash map, and if that user is still offline, then you see uh, the current timestamp. Time int is basically this, the current timestamp, if it's greater than equal to the offline of i, then you just erase it from the hash map and just increment the dot i because uh, uh, this guy was this guy is no longer offline, right? And in all the all other cases, if the user was never offline, you just increment that like just tag them, right? And else now this else is an all condition like this is an all message like this mention all user. So you just split the tokens and sorry it's not an all condition it's like this one this weird thing where you are given a, a space separated list of ids like this right so that's what i'm doing i'm just you know uh, uh, using this string stream to separate them by the delimiter of space and then going all over going over all the tokens calling this get id method to you know just extract the id and then yeah just tag them tag the users yeah and if it's an off offline event so this is an offline event here our message event gets completed if it's an offline event just you know go to the hash map and just you know see that uh, get the id of the user right this is an offline event get the id like this right this x of 2 x is your cover current event and you and you just uh, say when they will come back online which is the current time plus 60 like current time as in the events current time right this is how I'm maintaining the hash map and you just at the end return the total answer. Cool, moving on to the third problem. Third problem was very interesting, really liked it. So third problem says that you're given an array nums of length n and you're also given an integer k. Now, you want to like select one subarray from this array and you want to add an integer x to the subarray. And then you want to find how much, what would be the maximum frequency of the value of k after the operation. So let's see an example, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and k is 1. So output is 2 because let's say we select this subarray, uh, this one, right? So here uh, you can add, uh, you can add minus 5 as they are saying to this one so that you can get at least 1, 1, like 6 minus 5 is 1, right? And then on the left side, you have 1, 1. So maximum of two, uh, maximum of 1s you can get is 2. So the observation here is that your answer would always look like this. Like you have some k over here, then you have some subarray, and then you have some k on these suffix and on the prefix. And on this subarray, you'll find element with max frequency, right? Because you are anyways adding an integer x, right? x can be anything, it can be positive or negative. So if you find the element with maximum frequency, 
you can always convert it to a k converts to k right let's say this element is e so e uh, plus you can just add k minus e to it right so it will convert to k and the benefit of this is that you'll get the maximum frequency element uh, to convert to k right so you are anyways adding a uh, number of elements in the prefix prefix number plus suffix number plus the maximum frequency element in this subarray right but now this is not so simple to you know uh, do it in o of n since the constraints are very large right but what you have to realize here is that numbers of i is till 50 right so now maximum frequency element can be like from 1 to 50 only so you can just brute force over this space of numbers right so brute forcing over the space of numbers is like pretty uh it's a pretty critical observation because now let's say we care we care only about one number let's say we care only about number uh, n n belongs to from 1 to 50 right so what that means is let's say you're standing over here at index j okay and then now you you have an error like this 0 0 and 0 and n and 0 and right because we only care about this number we don't care about anyone else and now let's say this is an index i right so you want to find like what's the uh, frequency of n from i plus 1 to j right plus z of i sorry i mean this is a k not a zero sorry my bad k k k and k k and a k again so now you want to find that how many elements can you convert maximum number of times so let's say this is prefix so prefix of i denotes number of k's till i that's it pretty simple right fn of i plus 1 to j basically this one right this denotes how many n's are there how many n in sub array i plus 1 to j okay so your expression would be like this plus the suffix suffix is this much so suffix is constant so suffix of j plus 1 suffix of j plus 1 denotes number of k's from j plus 1 to n minus 1 right you have to maximize this expression okay you want to maximize this expression since n is the only number we care about you can write f of n i plus 1 j to like uh, uh, j minus like j minus i minus pj no sorry my bad j minus i is like the length of this sub array minus the number of k's in this array so number of k's in this array is nothing but pj minus pi right that's pretty much it so this is your fn i plus 1 j right and then if you rewrite this expression it will become j minus i minus pj plus pi plus pi plus sj of plus plus 1 so this is nothing but j minus pj minus i minus 2 pi plus sj plus 1 you don't have to worry about sj plus 1 since we are anyways iterating over j so this is like uh, just you can calculate this in constant like o of n time like pre pre calculated pre calc what we are worried about is this expression so you are standing in index j so this basically this value should be minimum so you can always track the minimum major track of minimum right uh, the previous minimum and this should be minimum because you are separating it right so yeah there you go you solve it in o of n because you can always maintain pre-calculate prefix sum and then you can always maintain the minimums right so yeah that's the that's what i'm doing i iterate over all the 
possible candidates like who who i want to convert right and i create this vector space v where if the element is e or if the number is like what i want i just push it back i just yeah append it to the space vector space and then i do this prefix suffix thing where prefix of i represents how many k's still lie right suffix of i mentions how many k's from like set suffix index to the last index of the array and then i just do this computation where uh and yeah one more boundary case here is that oh uh, yeah so coming over here your i can vary from 0 to j obviously but what if uh, your i was over here like minus 1 then you have to consider this entire array this entire array means that how many k's are in that array so there are like j plus 1 minus um b -b 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 j plus 1 minus whatever number of like uh, pjs minus i think yeah number of pjs is like number of k's so j plus 1 minus pj represents how many number of n's right in this uh, prefix array so that's a boundary case that i handle here like j plus 1 minus pj plus the suffix sum so this suffix is just like the constant that we are talking about here right and this you get you can always use ternary operators to you know handle the edge edge cases and then this minima is the star of this problem where we just figure out this jms 2 pj equation right from here right and you just subtract that minima right and then you add this constant and there you go you turn the answer that's it Thank you guys for watching. Bye.